What is up, guys? Welcome here back to the Debbie Rowdy YouTube channel. I'm your host, Kevin Coleman. We're back with the Debbie Mock Draft, first one of the offseason. If you don't play in Debbie, all it is is you get to draft college players as assets. So we go through four rounds of this one. Uh, you know, with Debbie, there's all kinds of things changing right now. In this mock, it's a 12 team mock. And the other thing to realize is like, we don't know some of the guys that are coming back or not, Travion, JJ, and those guys. So with the great assault, you'd be able to plug those guys in the first round. So here are the other guys going. So we're going to go through four rounds of this mock. I'm going to do spotlights for a bunch of different players here to kind of dive into their numbers and their advanced stats and all of that. But also just talking about the new way of drafting in Debbie and what you should be doing. Uh, because the whole take a quarterback first overall is not happening anymore. Uh, we actually have a quarterback taking until pick seven in the first round. So let's dive into the Debbie mock. Let's talk about where and how people are drafted. So let's get to the first round. First one's up, Luther Burden. Our guy, Luther Burden, had an absolute ball buster year for Missouri out there. 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns. I mean, he was he was phenomenal. He's a 25 class, as you can see there. If, if you're looking on the on the screen, you'll know, like, when they, in terms of the class they are, I put that out there so you should know. So, hey, this wide receiver class is loaded in the 25 class. You see his receiving grade there. His yards per route run was really good. His ADOT improved from last season. We saw a dominant year right he improved his yards he did all of that and he's the 101 and super flex tight end premium luther burden is the 101 so that is where he is getting value now remember even if you're not playing maybe you're not doing a draft yet this will also show you what some of your assets are worth as you head into the offseason that's why these mocks are a ton of fun now at the 102 Ted mcmillan crushed it this year out there for the wildcats arizona is probably if not the favorite probably pretty close to being the favorite in the big 12 next year 89.0 receiving grade, three drops only, yards per hour on 2.79, eight out was 12.9. He was one of the best wide receivers in college football last year. Going at the 102 is aggressive. I like it, but I do have a comp for that. Mike Evans. I think that he is Mike Evans. I know he's not as big in terms of weight, the, the pounds there, but his play style reminds me so much of Mike Evans. I absolutely love this kid. I think he's one of the best wide receivers as well in college football. Then we got a fun one here. 2027. So incoming freshman Ohio State wide receiver Jeremiah Smith. Now, Jeremiah has been, you know, touted as the next Julio Jones, AJ Green. We've seen all the comps. He's absolutely phenomenal going to Ohio State. 90 catches this year, a senior in high school, 1,300 yards, 19 touchdowns. Had his big breakout his junior year. You'll see that. Again, this might be aggressive. But in the format, wide receivers are what you want to grab, right? And if you want to go get your guy, go get it. Don't look at ADP for Debbie. It's crap. If you go look at ADP, it's just based on consensus from random dudes like me, and there is no consensus. What you need to do is understand that go get your guys, watch as many mocks as you can from every content creator out there, create your own big board. And if Jeremiah's sitting there and you're like, hey, I want Jeremiah, I know I'm not going to get him in a second, draft him. Don't worry about value in Debbie. Get the best assets. And the ones that carry the most value are wide receivers from Ohio State. You can still trade those guys. Carnell Tate, Brandon Ennis, those guys from last year still have value this year because of where they went and where they were recruited by. Understand that in the format, right? Next guy, 104, Evan Stewart. So four wide receivers off the board to start this bad boy. Evan Stewart, to me, is small Jamal, Jamar Chase. I love Evan Stewart. Everybody here at the channel knows that. Everybody in my Patreon knows that. Uh, and I think that, you know, he's in the portal right now. Oregon was the last thing that we heard. But again, you know, recording this before it goes out. I don't know if he's going to sign anywhere before then. But I think that if he gets good quarterback play, Evan Stewart is easily one of the best wide receivers in the country. At number five, first running back, Nicholas Singleton, who had a down year. I will say this. His receiving work helped him this year. 26 catches, 308 yards, and two touchdowns. His rushing work, though, on the inside, he's not a good inside runner. He is an outside runner. He bounces it out a lot. He Athleticism hurt him this year. He really struggled with his athleticism. And what that led to was you saw not as many breakaway runs. I know that offense isn't very good, but he was not very efficient this year. You see the attempts went up. But the yards didn't. And I, part of that is his inefficiency. Part of that was being a little banged up. Part of it was just he didn't improve as a runner, right? Explosive runs not there. Elusive rating is disgusting. We don't want to see that. So he's got to improve. You draft him at 105, you draft him at a ceiling. And I, I know with running backs, you got to be very careful with that. 106, we got CJ Baxter, true freshman from Texas, going to be a sophomore next year. Jonathan Brooks leaving to the NFL is a surprise, but it will help him. Jaden Blue, though, has kind of jumped up there. So that's something to note. Uh, another thing with CJ, you know, he's fine, just didn't see the explosiveness. So we, when that's the next step. Can he kind of develop that over his year? And you usually see a big jump from freshman to sophomore year. So that explosiveness should come, but that's what you'll be looking at for next year. 
Arch Manning, 107. Four, first quarterback off the board is Arch. Now, if J.J. was in this draft, J.J. McCarthy might be there. Quinn Ewers did not get drafted, you know, because we're just trying to see how, hey, maybe they're going to declare or not. Arch coming back, you know, this is a ceiling play. Do you believe he can lead Texas in the SEC? This is a risky pick, though. I will be honest with you. It is risky to take a quarterback this high, especially a quarterback like Arch going to the SEC. You know, if he doesn't do well this year or if he struggles or if he doesn't get out there with Quinn, he's going to depreciate in value. 108, Zachariah Branch. I think it was the steal of the first round, and I drafted him, so I can say that. 26 class, I think from a receiving standpoint, didn't see everything that we wanted this year. However, from just a prospect, what the NFL is going for, quick, shifty, out of the slot, very, very good wide receiver, but explosive all over the field. Kick returner, punt returner, he's probably one of the best in the country, um, besides the next guy that we're going to talk about. Zachariah Branch going there is a lot of fun. We should hopefully see another step if Miller Moss is there. I think that he's going to get tons of targets. 109, Barry and Brown. Now, Barry and Brown doesn't profile from a production standpoint as an NFL guy. You know what he profiles as? He profiles as a just a skill-based athletic. He's going to find a role in the NFL. He, I love this kid the way he plays. I'm surprised he's staying at Kentucky, but I do think with Vandegrift there next year, Brock Vandegrift from Georgia, we're going to see a big bump in his value. You know, receiving grade was okay. They had a really bad offense this year, but it's ADOT, 16.6. He is a playmaking wide receiver. He's one of my favorite wide receivers in the SEC. Expect big things from him next year. Carnell Tate was the guy. He was Jeremiah Smith last year for Iowa State. I think Carnell's going to step in and be that guy. I think in this room, he could be the wide receiver one as soon as this year. You know, you know, two only two drops, receiving grade 65.0, but got on the field, you know, at times looked explosive. Carnell Tate is one of those guys you take for upside. 111, Quinshawn Judkins. You know, we talked about him, you know, preseason as being kind of buyer beware. Early on in the year, he struggled. You know, there was offensive line struggles, running, all of that. But over time, he got a little bit better. 871 yards after contact. You see the missed tackles first. He didn't really have the explosiveness, the elusiveness, but he did have the other things, right? So, at 20, you know, 2025 class running backs are very, very deep, though. So we're going to talk about that. Judkins right now is in the portal. Where is he going to go? We heard Michigan, Ohio State. We heard Ole Miss coming back, maybe, possibly. So a lot of different things out there, but did have a – bounce back year after having a breakout year his freshman year and the round out the last one here in the first nico nico's it was my qb2 heading into last year in my rankings i love nico i think he's tailor-made for this offense he looked good in the game against iowa that they you know he he looked like a ncaa quarterback they didn't test the portal so i believe that they they believe in nico he's going to come out there um, you know, no turnover worthy plays, big time throw is there. I think he's fit for this offense. I did a whole profile on him last season. Go check that out. This kid is ready to play. and I'm excited to watch him play. So that's the first round. That's a lot of fun in there. You notice a lot of wide receivers. That's kind of the looks now. Now let's go through rounds two through four. So, you know, we have Jackson Otter at 201. Big, big season for him. Going to step in there as a starter. Drew Aller. Do you still believe in Drew Aller? Jonte Cook at, at 203. 204, Oscar Delp. 205, Eugene Wilson, and 206, Trevor Etienne, Florida what, running back, going to Georgia. I think that shoots up his value a lot. We're going to see a lot of fun there. Um, but again, again, 2025 class, right? Now, the guy I want to talk about and the guy that I think deserves a spotlight, Eugene Wilson. If you're looking for Zachariah Branch Light, it's Eugene Wilson, right? 81.5 receiving grade, 2.88 because a lot of his stuff's behind the scrimmage, a lot of screens, but he was explosive this season. And at 205 pounds, he, you know, pair that with his explosiveness. I love what he can do. He's going to translate very well to NFL offenses, um, even with bad quarterback play in Florida. I don't know how great the quarterback play is going to be next year, but he is a value right now in your Debbie drafts. Now, going through the next rounds, 207, Justin Say or Justice Haynes, Jordan James, stud. Not a lot of people are talking about Jordan James like they should be. Jaden Ott staying at Cal possibly at 209. Katrin Allen, who I like Katrin Allen in the second round more than I like Nicholas Singleton probably in the first round. Brandon Ennis, good value right now out there based on some trades and some things I've seen. And then Carson Beck, 212. I really like the value there for the quarterback. And that's who we're going to talk about here in the spotlight. When we're talking about Carson Beck, 90.7 offensive grade, big time throw is there, almost 4%. Turnover worthy play, you know, was very, very careful with the ball this year, even against Alabama where he struggled against the pressure. So that's where, you know, 57.4 offensive grade under pressure is the one thing he's got to work on. But that quarterback class of 2025 class is wide open. 
Carson Beck could slip right in there and he'd be just, he could be QB one, right? So if you get in a quarterback in the back end of the second, that could possibly be QB one and he could flip it around at 301 and you grab somebody else. I don't hate that value. It's still a risk, but it's not a terrible risk there. Now in the third round, when we're looking at guys here, Dante Moore going to Oregon, Jarquez Hunter going to Auburn. You can tell there's an Auburn fan. Remember, Debbie drafts are, are mostly college football fans. So you're going to find some kind of fan out there is going to draft some guys, you know, that you're like, wait, what? In the third round? That happens. That's the format, man. That's why we love it. Ollie Gordon at the 303. 304 is Connor Wiegman. 305 is Ashton Dinty. And in 306 is Jonah Coleman. I'm going to tell you right now, Jonah Coleman's being slept on out there. So you guys listening out there, go look at a little bit of tape from Jonah Coleman, um, Arizona running back. I absolutely love that pick and that value there uh, for Jonah Coleman. But the guy I want to talk about, I, and again, I get it. I'm going to get some crap for it from, from my guys in the Patreon. Ashton Genty is a guy that I've kind of been like hater on because I'm not a big G5 running back guy. However, when you look at what he was able to do last year, 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns, over 500 yards, you know, receiving five touchdowns. He was explosive, 183.6, explosive runs, missed tackles for us. He was, he was dominant last year. I don't think we can, we can just shrug it off anymore. I wish he would have went to a power five, but he did not. He's going back to Boise State, but I think that he's a fun pick in the third round. I don't mind taking him in the third round, late third, and having some fun in terms of Ash and Genty. I think that's a really, that's a value play, and that's one of those things where you're like, hey, I think that he's pretty good there. Now, next part of this, Darius Taylor from Minnesota, who I think is going to be slept on in the sophomore class because he got a little injured. Uh, Matthew Golden going to Texas from Houston. Devin Neal came back to school. Jalen Polk, who I argue is going to declare, but you know we're going to see who wins that argument. We put him in here anyway. Damian Martinez from Oregon State, and then Taylor Tatum, the freshman, so the first running back of the 27 class, going to Oklahoma. He's a guy that I think went to a good spot. I really like him there. Uh, but Devin Neal's the spotlight. You know, I wanted him to come out so bad this year. I thought he was going to be a great second round value pick. He has good receiving ability, good rushing ability, but he went back to Kansas. Good elusive runner, explosive runs, has those missed tackles for us there. Um, he's a guy that I don't mind taken in Debbie again, if, if you need to, if you want that solid back in that third or fourth round, that's shown production. Um, I think you can get a second round or second day grade right next year, like that three, four rounds, um, or maybe the second he can sneak in there if he has another big year for Kansas, but I really like Devin Neal there. Now, fourth round, we got Mika Hudson, who if you're going to, you know, thinking of like Mika Hudson going to the fourth round, or Jeremiah Smith going to the second, first round at 103. I'll stay on Mika Hudson's train. I was going to try to draft him earlier than this. I like this pick here. Uh, he's a kid going to Texas Tech, so he doesn't get the bump like going to other schools like the other schools do. I really like Mika Hudson there. Mark Fletcher going to Miami. Colston Loveland, Michigan tied in. Uh, Kate, Kate Klubnick kind of sitting around that fourth round still. Clemson really got to have a big year this year. He looks like a dead Debbie asset. Ryan Williams, true freshman going to Alabama. And then we got Isaiah Bond at Alabama as well. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to give – I can't not talk about my Michigan Wolverines. 6'5", 245. Loveland's one of those guys I really like as a tight end position. Had a kind of a breakout year this year. 585 yards and four touchdowns. 79.9 uh, receiving grade. Fits the tight end mold. I think he can be one of those guys that you really you know look at as being maybe the tight end one of his class next year over Delp. I really think he could do that. Um, I love the system at the end. I love everything about Colson Loveland. He's a guy that should be on your radar late, especially in tight end premiums like this draft was. And in the round of the last, you know, part of the fourth round, um, Jojo Trader, you guys need to know who this is. This kid is a phenomenal athlete. I can't believe I was so late on him. Shout out to Todd Vincent from league winners. He was on our Debbie guys. that was on him really early. Uh, Jojo Trader is fun. Get any picks you have in the fourth, fifth round, man, go grab this kid. Cause I think he can be the most explosive wide receiver on Miami next year. Um, Amari and Hampton running back for North Carolina, Kevin conception. Again, one of those guys or Concepcion, sorry, is one of those guys that I've actually a profile on. Um, I really like him at NC state deuce Robinson wide receiver. Now cam Coleman, true freshman going to Auburn and then Jalen Milrow, Alabama quarterback there. The last guy I want to mention, Amari and Hampton, you know, 25 classes loaded. And Amari in 1,500 yards and going in the fourth round, like looking at some of the guys that drafted in the first and second, Hampton could be that guy similar to the Javante Williams type role and Debbie where you draft them late and you just ride that production, right? You just go and you ride that production in there. I think that might be the mark there. So those are four rounds. That's our Debbie mock draft. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
if you want to know any more about Debbie, just DM me. We can talk about it. I can set you up bylaws. We can do it. I have an intro to Debbie video here on the YouTube channel. Um, but even then, just getting to know these college players, players a little bit more in detail. Um, we did a, a whole dynasty mock in my last video um, talking about all these guys and draft them in there. So this gives you a little bit more context of everybody there. So I appreciate you guys as always. Thank you for checking out the channel. Um, I, I can't believe the support that you've been able to give us over the years. And uh, that's why we're here to help you guys win your league. So check you guys next time.